morning. So we have finally made it back to my van back in the States. After three and a half long weeks of traveling around Ireland with my family, Iceland in a van with my brother, we finally made it back. So if this is your first time watching this channel or maybe you missed the last few videos, my name is Ryan and I live in the back of my self-converted camper van here in the States. But for the last couple weeks I've been traveling all over and I ended up spending three days in Iceland living in a camper van over there. And if you want to go watch that, those are my last three videos. But now we are back in the States. I'm back in my home van finally. And we're currently in Salt Lake City, if you couldn't tell from the mountains behind my van. Also, another thing if you've been watching my channel, I have been talking about and I'm in the process of driving America's longest road trip from Key West, Florida, all the way up to Alaska. And since I started this journey about what feels like forever ago. I've had to take some detours due to weather in Southern California and my brief detour out to Iceland. But I am finally done with detours, I am done with delays, and we are making our way towards Alaska no matter what. And just to force myself to stay true to my word and actually make my way up to Alaska, I have decided that I'm not going to allow myself to cut my hair until I get there. And I'm already just about two months overdue for a haircut, so I already need one pretty bad. But like I said, we are currently in Salt Lake City. I flew in yesterday after my trip home and I actually picked up this book, which is a Mormon cookbook with authentic recipes. Since we are in the city, that is the home of the Mormons. And I think tonight I'm gonna to be taking one of the recipes out of this cookbook, probably the funeral potatoes or cheesy potatoes, whatever you wanna call them, because that is the most Mormon staple food that I could find in this cookbook and online. That's what we're gonna be doing after I finish this breakfast and hit the gym. Oh, and also I'm hoping to find a stealth camping spot somewhere in the city, hopefully next to Capitol Hill, to stay for the night. But before we get into all that, I wanna take a second to thank this video's sponsor, and that is Native and their line of personal care products. And they have a bunch of different scent options that you can choose from. I got the cucumber mint and the citrus and herbal musk. And my personal favorite is the uh, citrus and herbal musk. I've had these for about a week and a half, and I've been trying them out. And my favorite thing about these deodorants is that the smell isn't overwhelming like other deodorant brands that I've used. It's not sticky at all, and it feels extremely dry when I'm putting it on, which I really like, because I'm pretty picky about what I put on my body. So it's nice that it goes on, doesn't make you feel sticky, and protects from odors for up to 72 hours. And another thing is that it has ingredients that I can actually read, which is really nice. It's aluminum and paraben free, and I've never seen a company that takes the time to spell out exactly what each of their ingredients mean like they do. They also have a ton more products than just deodorant and body wash. And if you use my link in the description along with code Ryan to me, you get 20% off your first order. And this offer is available site wide, but only for a limited time. So make sure you stock up and save. And with that, I'll send you back to the video. Also, if you haven't noticed, I am sweating a bit because although van life in the summer is fun, when you're sleeping late like I did today, the back of the van really starts to heat up and it is currently 81 degrees back here. So not the most pleasant. And the reason I didn't set up my portable AC that I have down here is because last night it was 50 degrees. It's just in the summer. The temperature fluctuates so heavily that a lot of the times it doesn't even make sense to set up the AC. So just gonna have to start getting up earlier. Alright, it is time to go pick things up and put them down. where there isn't much in the world that makes you feel better than a nice workout in the shower. So now that we're all showered and clean, 
I think the next thing we gotta do is go to the grocery store and get all the ingredients we need to make our Mormon dish. And the dish that we are making is the cheesy potato casserole. If you look it up, it's got a couple of different names. The most popular, I think, is funeral potatoes. And the reason that they're called funeral potatoes is because they're typically served at gatherings after a funeral. But they're also served at other celebrations because apparently it's pretty tasty. Onward to the grocery store. So it is starting to get close to that time where I'm gonna have to start being more mindful of how much groceries I buy because a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna buy here in the States, I'm not gonna be able to bring into Canada because of the restrictions on food and produce that they have uh, at the border. And I don't wanna waste a ton of food if I don't have to. So this area right here, where kind of all these spots are just on the side of the road, are where we are going to try to stealth camp tonight, just in front of the Capitol building here. I might try somewhere up there because it looks a little bit more level, but this is where we're going to be trying to camp tonight. But we're just driving past right now because we are still on our way to the grocery store. And for anyone who might not know, Utah, and specifically Salt Lake City, is the headquarters for the Mormons or the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, and that is one of their buildings. That is the office building for the church. And then I think the church is also down here as well. Um, but they're massive buildings and they own a lot of the city and they've been here for a long time. I think since the 1800s when they kind of settled here and farmed and ended up kind of calling this place home. And the church is so ingrained in the kind of society of the city that even at the airport they have a specific dedicated area built into the airport that is meant for people waiting for people returning home from missions that the church sent them on. So it's like this big nice room right at the exit of the airport where families and friends wait for people to come home for missions. So I just took a picture of the uh, page in the book that I need to buy all the ingredients from. And I think these funeral potatoes are meant to be more of a side dish. So I also screenshotted a beef and rice casserole recipe because I just recently got these mini casserole dishes. So I figured I'll make two small ones and that'll be my dinner. All right, I think that's everything we need. We didn't really need much, because not a lot really goes into it. And then the other recipe, I already have everything that I need for it, so I didn't need anything for that. I think I parked a little too close on the other side, so I gotta get in the front door. Good thing I didn't get much, though. All right, groceries are put away, onward find our stealth camping spot. Actually, I'm gonna throw out this trash first. So we're actually pretty close to the capital where we are. We're only about seven minutes away. And if you're wondering why my phone isn't clipped into there, it's because I broke it. So now I can't use it anymore and I gotta get a new one. All right, so there's the capital building right there. Now I'm just gonna try to find a spot somewhere along the road right here. And it looks like there's plenty open, so. Shouldn't be too hard to find one. And I think I'm gonna go right here, directly in front of the Capitol. No, no overnight signs. It's nice and level. Feels like a pretty safe area to camp out at. Tuck my ears in so they don't get ripped off. And there we go. So, this is it. This is the spot that we are stealth camping tonight, and we are directly in front of the Capitol. I don't think we really could get more in front of it if we tried, but looks like there's a gift shop over there. And then it's actually pretty nice up here. It kind of reminds me of uh, Washington DC where I'm from. Also, I don't know if you guys can see it, but nice view of some snow-capped mountains off in the distance too. But that's pretty normal for Salt Lake. Man, do I need a haircut. Definitely one of the uh, nicer stealth camping spots I've ever stayed. And I think there's a bunch of like little trails and pathways that you can walk around the Capitol building, but I'm not gonna walk too far because I gotta get back to the van and start cooking. It's like the Rocky Balboa stairs in Philadelphia. The views from the top up here are pretty uh, spectacular though. Panoramic all the way around. But I think it's time to head back to the van and start cooking dinner. According to this book, first thing we gotta do is wash and boil the potatoes. And I'm kinda gonna make the funeral potatoes and the beef and rice 
casserole at the same time. So while I boil these potatoes, I'm also gonna cook up some ground meat. And since we're stealth camping and I don't want the entire world to know that I'm back here, with all these lights on cooking a meal, I've got the curtains drawn up there and the curtains drawn back there. So none of the light leaks out and so I can stay as stealthy as possible. And also I'm gonna put a hat on because my hair looks ridiculous. <laughs> So we'll get that started boiling while I peel the potatoes. Also, the recipe that's in that book feeds seven to 14 people and there's only one of me, so I cut it down by like six. Beautiful. So we can just cut these in half so they boil faster. And then while we wait for that water to boil, we're gonna get started on the other stuff. And for the meat casserole filling, we're using everyone's favorite tooth meat. All right, I've been chopping this up for about five minutes. It's mostly browned and chopped up fine enough for me, so I'm gonna throw in some onions. And the recipe in the uh, book called for olives, but I don't really like olives, so I'm gonna substitute that for my uh, fajita mix that I got. And also the recipe calls for salt, pepper, paprika, and basically just all the taco seasoning. So instead of making that, I already have taco seasoning on hand. So I'm gonna add that onto the meat with the uh, onions, fajita peppers, tomato sauce, and then some additional boiling water that I put, put here on the... Well, I was wondering why my water stopped boiling, and it is due to the fact that I have completely run out of propane. So that sucks. This is the first time that has ever happened to me. I think it's because I've been using that outdoor propane fire pit more often, so I've been using more propane than I regularly do. I'm just gonna have to take all this off the stove, run to the grocery store, grab some propane, and then get back to cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up real quick. And luckily the uh, meat is already cooked, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm glad I didn't already have everything in the oven because that would have sucked. In order to uh, try to save everything, I cleaned off the counter, got the van ready to drive because I can't just drive the van around with all this stuff laying out on the counter. So I put everything away that I could put away. The cooked food, I kind of just wedged in between all of the stuff in the sink. So the water that I halfway boiled is sitting under this. Um, and this shouldn't really move around that much. It's kind of wedged in there pretty tight. So that should be good to drive around with. And then I've just got the potatoes sitting over here on the couch. So after we get the propane and once we get back here, Hopefully our spot is still open and we can camp at this exact spot and we should be able to just pick up where we left off, throw everything back on the stove and finish cooking this meal. How's it going? Can I do a uh, propane exchange? And just like that, we are back, but it looks like our spot has sadly been taken. So I guess we'll just go find another one to park in and we should be fine. As long as we can find one, because it looks like now <laughs> everything is full. Ay, ay, ay. Found one. This is going to be our new campsite out front of the Capitol. So I'm gonna get this propane hooked up real quick. Back in the cabinet, and then we're gonna get started cooking again. Test it out, make sure we got propane. Beautiful. Now we can finish cooking. Show you guys the uh, new spot that we're still camping at real quick. So we're just over this ridge. Looks like there's a park down there or something. But we're in these angled parking spots just on the other side of the state capitol. So before we were over there, now we are right here. And I might move us back to that other spot later tonight, but for now, I just want to get dinner cooked and I'm gonna get everything set back up real quick. There we go. We are back in action with everything back on the stove. Burners are actually on. And now we just gotta wait for this water to boil and then we'll pick back up where we left off. Okay, it's been about five, 10 minutes. I also got the uh, oven started on preheating while I was waiting for that water to boil. But the water in this smaller pan is just about boiling. So I'm gonna add a cup of raw rice to this. Stir that in. And then I'm gonna add in this boiling water Just like that. Pop it in the oven for just about an hour on 300. And it's gonna be just about perfect timing for the other one, because this one only needs 30 minutes in the oven, which is just about how long it's gonna take me to finish this, and then get it in the oven 
with that one. But I'm gonna be honest, I think running out of propane really wasn't the worst thing that could happen because the grocery store was only like five minutes away and it kind of forced me to clean up the first half of this recipe so now I have a much cleaner workspace to uh, finish off the rest of this. Potatoes going in. Now those gotta boil for just about 20-ish minutes. And honestly, I was looking out the front door while I was waiting for that water to boil, and this spot is kind of better than the other one because I've got a nice view of the mountains off in the distance. It's a little bit more private because it doesn't open up right to a park. I mean, there is a sidewalk right here, but it's a little bit less traffic than that other one across the street. So it's actually kind of nice. It'll be nice to wake up here and have a coffee with the uh, view of the mountains in the morning. These are just about done. Oh, cool those off, and then we'll get them all grated up. I'm ready to go in the oven. So I'll wait for those uh, potatoes to cool down. I think this one is just about done. It actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and top that with some cheese. And then I'm gonna leave it out of the oven until my potatoes are ready to go in so that they finish kind of somewhat around the same time. But I'm basically just putting it in for another 10 minutes anyway so that the cheese melts, so it doesn't really matter. That should be enough potatoes. So now we can add a third of a cup of cream of chicken soup. And we're gonna dilute that down with just about a fourth of a cup of water to make it a little more liquidy. And then we can add that in on top, as well as some sour cream, some chopped onions, a little bit of salt, and to finish it off, some shredded cheese. And I guess ideally you'd have a uh, coarser grater so that the uh, potatoes don't just kind of mash together like mashed potatoes but I didn't have that, so we had to use the fine grater. And the recipe called for crushed corn flakes to go on top, but I already had these in my pantry and they'll probably taste better, so I'm gonna add crispy onions. Instead of the corn flakes. Top it off with a final layer of cheese and then it's ready to go in the oven. And we'll let that bake for just about 30 minutes. And we'll pop this in there and let it cook for Another 10. So I took the other dish out like 10, 15 minutes ago and I just let this cook a little bit longer, but oh, that looks so good and it smells delicious. And I really do think the crispy onions are gonna taste so much better than the cornflakes would have. Finish it off, we'll top it with some green stuff to make it look pretty. And there we go. That is our funeral potatoes. So for kind of a while now, I've been thinking about potentially building out another rig that I can live in full time. And I've been kind of mentally weighing pros and cons that kind of each style of nomadic living has. So you've got van life, you've got truck life, you've got RV life, you've got car life, you've got everything in between. And I was sitting here thinking about it while I was waiting for this casserole to finish. I honestly think that if you're gonna be doing this kind of stuff full time and stealth camping all over the place, the only way to really do it without the stress and headache of like getting the knock and trying to be as inconspicuous as possible when you're staying in like populated areas like this because realistically, if you're gonna be doing this full time, you're gonna end up in places like this because you truly can't stay out in the wilderness 24 seven all the time. You're gonna have to come into the cities at some point and just realistically, you're gonna have to end up stealth camping a lot more than you would think. And I really think out of the options that you have, van life is the most inconspicuous or can be made to be the most inconspicuous. So if you've been thinking about living in a van or doing anything like full-time van life, just something you might wanna think about. But going back to what I was saying about building out another rig, for a while I was torn between a truck camper or a built-out van, or maybe even something just a little bit bigger than a normal van. I think if I were to do it again, I honestly would build out a van and the only real difference that I would look for that this van doesn't have is four-wheel drive and diesel. The reason that I would want a 4x4 is just so I could go anywhere and not have the stress of dealing with getting stuck in the mud, snow, and just being able to access a lot more remote areas and cooler places all over the country. And then two, diesel just because it's more reliable, less things to worry about when you're living full-time. Honestly, both of the casseroles are pretty good. This meat one is just essentially just a taco bowl casserole, and it's pretty good. And this potato one is really good, but I don't think I'd have it as a main course just because I don't really think I'd want my whole meal to be just potatoes. But anyways, I'm going to finish up dinner and then start doing some more research and planning for my trip up to Alaska. I will catch you guys in the morning. Well, made it through another night of south camping. And it looks like there might be a uh, storm rolling in out there. Doesn't look like it's the best weather outside. It is 9 a.m. So today we have got a decent amount of driving to do. Because I think I'm gonna head up north towards Tetons, Yellowstone, 
and then up maybe towards Glacier. I don't know if I'm going to do Glacier because I think the going to the Sun Road, which is the main road in Glacier, um, like over half of it is closed, so I just don't know if it's worth it. But I guess we'll see. Also, I always get people asking me where I go to the bathroom when I'm in places like this. And typically, if I got to go to the bathroom and do number two, I try to do that before I get to my camping spot if I'm stealth camping in the city where there's not going to be an available bathroom. And me personally, it might be different for you, but I've never had any issues with it. And then if I need to go and I wake up in the morning, I either just drive somewhere or now that everything's back open again, I can just walk somewhere. And then my second option, which I'm about to use right now, because I just woke up and got to go is my little toilet. But I only use this for going number one, not number two, because I would not be cleaning that out, so. See you guys in a minute. Also, I got these new like deodorizer pouches for it. It actually makes it smell a lot better, but it's not too like overwhelmingly chemically like a porta potty bathroom or something like that. But it was relatively quiet all night here last night too. Wasn't too many cars that drove by, especially after like 10 p.m. I think I maybe heard like two or three before I fell asleep. So definitely one of the better spots that I've been able to stealth camp. But I think I'm just going to take this coffee, sit outside, enjoy it with a beautiful view of the mountains, and then hit the road. So, as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.